It's Jason with Threefold Solutions again, talking about Planning Center people lists this week. I'm actually going to get into what I consider to be some of my favorite data maintenance lists. Now, this includes things that, you know, org admins or PCO account owners should really pay attention to on kind of a weekly basis, maybe bi-weekly. The idea here is that these lists are really helpful when you're trying to kind of maintain your database for cleanliness, data hygiene, as well as security. So I'm going to show you a couple of those examples in this list without spending too much time on it. Let's jump into that. But first, let me say, as always, we appreciate any comments, any questions that you may have. We also love it if you would give us a like on this video and it's subscribe to this channel. If you like this kind of content, we'll continue to crank it out and make sure we always keep you notified and updated on any new content we create. With that, let's jump into the video. So to begin with here, I've got a set of lists that I use on a regular basis. This is just a basic set. Some are very simple. Some are a little more complex. I'm going to run you through these examples quickly. I want to show you the parameters, the conditions, the uh, rules that I've set up and share those with you and see if maybe this is something that could help you in the way that you manage your data. But let's just start off with at the top here, one that I think you can find from a dashboard, but sometimes you need to take some action. Now this is called our background check expiration or refresh and it has to do with people whose background checks in the system are going to refresh or need to be refreshed in the next one month. So in this particular example I have one called background check expires in one month. Let's take a look at that one. Now with this one I have one person here I have turned off all of the emails and the contact information. Most of my profiles are completely bogus. They're just fake profiles. But every once in a while, we have different data mixed in here, and YouTube doesn't love that. So for all intents and purposes, I've turned that off. If you see any of these lists, I have just basically used first and last name. Most of these are fake. Now, just to see the rules, let's take a look at how we've set this up. It's a very simple email, I'm sorry, very simple rule. So I'm using people as my choice. I'm obviously going down to the background check choices. This one is status. So I'm looking at background check status. In this case, I'm using will expire, but pay attention here. There's a lot of actual things you can do with background checks, like who's not started, who has a pending background check. Now, some of these are dependent on using checker. If you use another third party system like protect my ministry or one of the other, you may not have all of these options available, but just know that they're here. There's also a completed, so how many background checks were completed in a particular time frame, or how many are currently expired or will expire, and that's what we're after. So this is looking for people who have a background check that will expire in the next one month, and you have this opportunity of any time or in the next. So in the next one month, and you can make day, week, or month of choice here. Now, I'm going to go ahead and submit that. We've already done it. I'm going to go back to results and just show you I have one person. Now, for me, with this particular list, I take it a step further. So I'm going to go to settings and just show you that anytime we're dealing with data maintenance, I create a category for this. So just to show you, I have a category called data maintenance. I assign that to my lists. If I start to get busy with lists, I want to know that I can sort, filter, and find my lists very quickly and easily. If we take a quick trip back to lists here, you will see that I have 64 lists in here. This is just a sandbox account. You may have hundreds of lists in your account. The thing is, it's hard to find those that you come back to. You can star those and create favorites, and that's great, but I prefer to use categories. If you set a category, you can go to data maintenance, go to whatever category and find specific lists that you revisit all the time. So use categories where applicable. Let's jump back into this one. Now there's one more step on this one that I like to do. And in this situation, I could go to the dashboard, the background check dashboard, and I could see people who are going to expire from there. I'm using a list so I can also take advantage of something like an automation. In this case, I'm putting an automation on this list that adds somebody to a workflow called background check refresh 30 days, and it will basically update anytime somebody is added to my list, and I've got it set to refresh nightly. Those are found under settings. Those settings for refresh are right here. Oh, I take that back. I didn't, so I'm going to go ahead and update that. So it's going to be nightly. I'm going to have this run every night. 
And basically, anytime somebody is added, I will have a result of someone. They are then automated into a workflow where we can then follow up with them, make sure they're still actively serving, double check to make sure all their criteria and information is still accurate, and then go ahead and order a background check for them and notify them that we're doing a refresh. So there's a lot of different ways you can use this one, but it is kind of handy to keep an eye on them outside of just the dashboard where you can take action when something happens here. Okay, let's take a look at a couple others. So I also have some here that have to do with general data maintenance. I'm going to skip around, but we have one here that's called child no household. Now this is a simple one again, and I've turned off that data. So let's go to rules. In this situation, I'm just using two simple conditions. And the first one is a people condition. It's looking at the personal option here. And then in personal, you'll find a whole bunch more options, but I'm using age. And that allows us to target children in this case because it is called child no household. So I'm looking for people who are zero to 17 years old. And then I'm basically excluding people. Notice I'm using the exclude here, not the include. And I'm looking for people who are currently not in a household. So I'm excluding people that are in a household or where the household exists. And in this case, you have two choices. You have primary contact or exists. I want to exclude people in the households that exist so I can only see children 0 to 17 that do not have a household. Once I run this list, I'm going to look to see why is this person not in a household? Maybe I can identify that household and I can add them to it. It's one of those lists you have to work through. You usually do this every couple weeks or every week and you basically just have a list of data maintenance tasks that you do based on these lists and you try to update information and this helps you with your data hygiene. So you're just trying to build better solid information in your database with your profiles. Now, in this particular instance, I want to know how many children I have that don't have a household. I've got all of these kids. I would click on their profile. I would try to identify them. I would try to give them a household and maybe learn what their activity is. How have they engaged? Have they checked in? Where are they, where are they currently engaging with us at? So that's one of the reasons I would use this. Okay, that one's called child, no household. And I mentioned this before, but again, I'm using that data maintenance label on this one. I can keep them all together that way. So again, we're, we're looking at data maintenance categories. Let's go look at another one here that also has to do with children. In this particular one, I'm looking at children with an email or a phone number. Now, this isn't always a bad thing, so I adjust my parameters. Let's go to the rules. And on this particular one, I'm actually using two rules. The first rule, I'm looking again for people whose age is between zero and 11 years old. Now this may be different for different people, different churches, different organizations. I like to use 11 because around 12 years old, we start to see our students become a little more active with an email address or a little bit of independence. That number could be a little higher, could be a little lower. Adjust it however it fits for you. Now the second part to this is where we actually use some conditions with an or statement. So we're actually going down to a second rule and we're using people, personal, and again, personal is way down the list down here under the tabs. And then we're basically saying, email address. So once you've found email address, you have some choices here. Now, obviously it could be homework or other, in this case, any email address. And then I'm just simply using exists. Email address exists. Notice you could start with, end with, contains, is lots of different ways to use it, including blocked and unsubscribed. We're gonna talk about that in just a minute. And now I'm also gonna add an or statement. So I've added another condition. I've gone up to the little drop down, and I've said any. That way it can be this or this rather than this and this. And notice our rule is also using an all statement, which in this case is it has to meet this rule and this rule. So there needs to be at least one piece that, that we get a hit on, which is zero to 11 years old. And then one of these other two needs to be also present, which would be an email address or a phone number. When we run that one, we're looking for children's information uh, that might be actually mom or dad's 
contact information. And in this situation, it causes confusion, especially when parents log into Church Center and they accidentally choose their children's profile, and then they're restricted from something in the future. And they don't even realize that they've logged into it. The idea is that when children have the same phone number or the same email address, it generally causes confusion. So when I go in here and I look at the results, I will look at the profile. I will go there and compare the phone number and the email address to the parents. If it is a match, then I will remove it from the child's profile. And then we will basically just work it that way to assume that eventually when this student gets old enough and has their own information, if their parents agree to that, we will add that to their profile at that time. But for right now, this is a way for us to identify the younger kids that probably have mom or dad's email or phone number on their profile. Okay, so that's another one. Let's take, it a few, take a look at a few more here. So we also have one that I think is super, super easy, but effective, and that is email address is blocked. Now we just looked at that one, but I'm gonna refresh it. We basically have people, personal, email address, any type, is blocked. And in this situation, I'm looking for people who might have a misspelling on their email address. Sometimes it's, you know, just Gmail and it's spelled without the I or something along those lines. You can identify that when that happens. I like to add those to a pro to a workflow where I can follow up with people. And I might do that through a phone call if I have to. But the idea here is this is a maintenance list where these emails are going to bounce. I'm going to have issues with them. So I try to identify those on a regular basis and try to work through them. So sometimes if it is Gmail and it's on and it's misspelled, maybe I just update it and we see if it shows up again on the list. You un unblock it, allow it to come back through the system. If it shows up again, we've probably got a bigger issue with something else misspelled. So a lot of times you can use this one in conjunction with is unsubscribed. You can also use unsubscribed as a maintenance list to see how many people have unsubscribed. The other part to that is sometimes people will tell you that they're no longer getting your emails. When that happens, you can use your unsubscribe list to see if they're on the list. If they are, you can easily remove them. It's just a way for you to keep track of what's happening within your database with your profiles. All right, let's look at a couple others here. We also have some security lists here. I want to mention a couple of them. One of them is the directory security list. If you use a directory, it's not a bad idea, and I don't have anybody on this list yet, to have a couple criteria for this list kind of running in the background and always refreshing. So in this particular instance, I am looking for in rule number one, anybody who's created since one day ago. So brand new profiles or people that have had an update since one day ago. In this situation, I'm looking for a brand new profile or an updated profile. And I'm looking for people that have directory access. So this is people that hypothetically we've given access to and it allows me to then check down on who we've given access to. And when somebody changes an email address or they change some information on their profile, this is going to say last updated kicks off and it shows me that person. And if I recognize something, they're great. But if it's something out of the ordinary and that name or that address should not be changed or I think it's suspicious, then I can follow up with somebody and make sure their account wasn't hacked or we've given access to somebody inadvertently to our directory. So it's just a good one to have. Now I've got another one that goes along with that. Again, these are maintenance lists and security lists that I think are good for admin. So kind of approaching this from the admin perspective. Now, when I look at this other one, it's called Access to Planning Center Security List. And that's just the name that I've given it. Now I've got a couple of people on here. It happens to be one of my fake profiles. But in this particular instance, I want to show you that we're looking for a couple different criteria. It's a little more complex. So in rule number one, we're looking for, again, similar criteria. People that have been created brand new profiles in the last day or people that have been updated in the last day. And we're looking for some additional criteria. Now, this is a people option. It's called applications. It's right down here in the tab section. And you'll notice that it's just listed as applications. And then what we're looking for is 
can log into and one of the apps they you know, basically have access to. I list them all. Now you'll notice there's a second one here and it's called two-step verification. Now that's another good security list where you want to make sure everybody who has a login is utilizing two-step verification just to be secure. Well, you could do the exact same list and you can go through and you can use two-step verification active as a way for you to see how many people have it active or how many people have it inactive. So there's really two ways you can utilize this. The first one though is showing me people who are able to log into one or the other or the other or the other. So one of these applications, if not more than one, and it basically tells me this is somebody on staff or somebody who's been empowered with a login to one of the apps and something has changed on their profile or they it's a brand new profile. And I wanna keep an eye on that and pay attention to those. And I just wanna make sure that I'm constantly keeping an eye on who has access to what. This is a great list for that. And again, it's a simple one. I'm just reproducing or duplicating each of those conditions until I've accommodated all of the apps. Same thing with your two-factor login scenario. You can change this to two-step verification. You can go to inactive and see how many people do not have two-factor authentication turned on. And you can send out an email to them and encourage them to make sure they do that. So lots of ways you can utilize these. I'm gonna go ahead and change this one back and then we'll go back and take a look at a couple more. Now, that's two of the security lists that I use on a regular basis. There's more than that, but I also have one here that's just super basic. It's student missing grade. Now, in this particular instance, I like to turn on things that are helpful in the actual columns here. In this case, I've turned off email address and phone number, but I have turned on gender and age, and it helps me kind of proof it. So let's go back over to rules, and let's look at this one. Now, I'm looking for people who have a, you know, again, personal age, between five and 17 years old. That means they should be of student age. And then I'm saying and exclude people who have personal grade set. So in this case, I'm not looking for the actual grade or I'm not looking at a range of grades. I'm just saying has a grade set on their profile and then I'm excluding those people. So I wanna know how many students are missing grade information on their profile. And that's something that if I know the student, I can update. If I need to seek it out from mom or dad, then I can work towards updating that information. Now this is also something that you can use a list and you can update through an email to the parents and you can encourage them to update that information on Church Center. Or if you're not using Church Center, you can use a form. So you can send an email to the parents by using the drop down down here, which is the primary contacts of matches, not the exact matches and you can email the parents with a link to a form that says you know student update form or information update form or something to that effect but it keeps it easy for you okay so now we've looked at quite a few of these there's just one or two more that I want to mention there's a simple one here and it has to do with just good old gender is missing this is as basic as it gets but when you look at the rule here it's just simply saying people personal gender is and in this case not set and then you run this list on a regular basis. And if you can tell by somebody's name that it's male or female, you can make these updates and work through this list little by little. You may not be able to tell on every single name, but for the most part, you can generally work through this and you can update that information. Now there's lots of other ways that you can utilize lists for data maintenance. These are just some examples that I think are basic and things that you can keep up with on a regular basis. They also start to get you exploring some of the different ways that you can combine rules and conditions to help you identify people. We're going to do a whole series on these lists and I'm going to start with these data maintenance lists, but the next video is going to be talking more about engagement based uh, lists and how you can actually track people who might be drifting away or people who are active but not doing certain functions. So there's lots of ways we can use these. That'll be in the next video. I hope this one helps you and you're utilizing some kind of data, data maintenance routine on a regular basis.